powerful woman has always been a TV and movie favorite. Nowadays, there are many films that portray strong, independent, and smart women, both physically and mentally. The evolution of the strong female character perhaps began during the creation of classic noir films in the 1940s. These films of moral ambiguity often present audiences with a flawed anti-hero protagonist alongside a femme fatale in an urban setting. These films often wrap to its cynicism and sexual motivations pay away from more powerful female characters to grace the screen. These females with complex character dynamics were seen as dangerous, intelligent, and seductive, portraying what we now call the femme fatale. 45 miles an hour. How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. According to the Urban Dictionary, if a woman has a reputation as a femme fatale, she is considered to be an extremely intelligent, attractive, and seductive woman who has a tendency to use men in many ways, either for sex, money, help, attention, and support. She never falls in love with the man, but rather uses him and takes advantages that he gives her. In traditional noir film, femme fatales are portrayed as dangerous, intelligent, and seductive women. They're likely to have similar background, broken life, because of the collapsing society which shaped them as a femme fatale, because they want to gain benefits to feel secure. In near noir films, these women are sometimes the main characters and often have fluid identities. They have more interaction with the anti-hero and often provide benefit to them. In this video, we shall discuss our top 5 femme fatales based on their intelligence and how they use their assets to their advantage. These females are manipulative, aware of their beauty as they gain it, as they use it to gain what they want from the men who are at their disposal. They are dangerous women motivated by money and power or more, or more personal reasons such as safety, love and revenge. Here are our top 5 dangerously intelligent femme fatales. Number 5, we have Cora Kellaway. I've made a big mistake in my life and I've got to be this way just once to fix it. Unlike your typical femme fatale, she does not have a shady backstory. She had married a much older man, Nick Papadakis, and works in a countryside diner with him. Cora is a young, ambitious and beautiful woman. She is sick of working in a small diner with her husband, whom she does not love. One day, Frank Chambers, a young drifter, stopped by the dinner for a meal and ended up working in the diner. Cora felt attracted by Frank and quickly had a thought of killing Nick, improving the diner, and starting a new life with Frank. She used Frank to plan the two murder attempts on Nick. The first one failed as Nick didn't know it was Cora's plan to murder him and make it seem like a bathroom accident. Determined to kill Nick, Frank and Cora faked a car accident. They lured Nick with wine, strike him on the head, and crash the car. And both of them end up injured. Come on, let's get down there. We gotta mess ourselves up so we can prove we've been in the accident too. Come on. The local prosecutor suspects what has actually occurred, but does not have enough evidence to prove it. Cora was thus charged with the crime of Nick's murder. Frank then signs a complaint against her. Furious and indignant, Cora insists on offering a full confession detailing both the roles. She ends up granting a plea agreement under which she is given a suspended sentence with no jail time. However, at the end she was killed in a car crash when Frank was driving. Cora was intelligent in using Frank as an accomplice in the murder and as a lover. If the murder had been successful, she would have been having a new life with Frank and owned a restaurant. She used her allure to attract Frank and Nick's love to get away from the crime after the failed attempt. She is dangerous and she is able to use her beauty and her wit to get a man to kill for her. Coming in at number 4 on our list is Elsa Bannister. She is a very intriguing woman who is surrounded by mystery and a shady past. She tells Michael, who is the main character, that she was born in China and has Russian parents. She had also worked in the most infamous places in China, and this may suggest that she had worked as a prostitute before marrying. That might be a, an indicator of her power to seduce men in a sense. Elsa seduces Michael with their beauty, and almost immediately from that point on, she is able to control him completely. She has great ambitions and plots to kill her husband, pulling Michael into her schemes. She cares only about herself. She is intelligent due to the fact that she manipulates the main character in order to achieve her goal of killing her husband and not getting caught. 
She uses her beauty to seduce both Michael and Grisby in order to kill her husband and get away from the crime. She is also dangerous due to her connections in Chinatown, due to the fact that she worked as a sex worker there. She had many connections, that means she never had to lift a finger when she needed a crime to be committed. She has others to do that for her. Coming in at number three on our list is Phyllis D. Trayson. I've been trying to contact your husband for the past two weeks, but he's never in his office. Is there anything I can do? The insurance ran out on the 15th. I'd hate to think of you having a smash fender or something while you're not uh, fully covered. Perhaps I know what you mean, Mr. Neff. I've just been taking a Sunday. Phyllis Dietrichson knows of her own power and is definitely aware of just how to use it. She perfectly embodies the seductress who feigns helplessness and is gradually revealed to be deadly and manipulative. Phyllis is introduced to the protagonist, Walter Neff, in a way she wants to be perceived as a sexual object. However, her lack of conscience and indifference to how he, she behaves leaves her understanding exactly how she is perceived and uses it to her benefit. She is objectified to the point of which she wishes to be and uses Walter's lust to get what she wants. It is Phyllis that turns a man such as Walter into a murderer, convincing him to help her murder her rich husband for his insurance money. She presents herself as a piece of material on purpose, and this manipulation is what makes her dangerously intelligent. Phyllis is so indifferent to the feelings of those around her that she is able to use them to her leisure. With a corrupted morale and lack of sense of guilt, Phyllis becomes the woman responsible for the downfall of a male figure. She constantly tempts him into doing and believing whatever she wants him to. And in the end, it is her own self-preservation and selfishness that led to her downfall. She confronts Neff and attempts to kill him once he got in the way. She betrayed him and this was where he, she met her end and he put two bullets into her. Ultimately, her greatest crime was not the murder of her arrogance and assumption that she can bend and defeat her man to her will. Coming in hot into our second spot is Amy Dunn. You think I'd let him destroy me and end up happier than ever? No fucking way. He doesn't get to win. She's a woman who gets what she wants, even if it means accusing someone of a murder which did not actually occur. Her parents wrote a children's book centered around her depicting an unrealistic sense of perfection which she didn't feel was accurate. She later found out that her husband, Nick Dunn, cheated on her with one of his students and she ran away, faking her own death, incriminating her husband for it. She drained some of her own blood and made a mess of it in the kitchen so that Nick would be the obvious suspect. Thus began a scavenger hunt unlike any of the ones they had for their anniversaries. This one is filled with clues that the police would also be able to find them and further suspect Nick. Amy's plan is for him to be arrested and executed, after which he commits suicide. The whole situation puts the media and the FBI in a frenzy, and everyone is trying to find out exactly what happened and what the MO was. Towards the end, Amy shows up alive and having also changed her appearance. The lead investigator of the case had started having doubts about whether or not Nick had caused this. However, Amy revealed to Nick that she is pregnant and wants to stay in, in the marriage, and the fight occurs. They reveal to the media that they are expecting a child. So not only is Amy dangerous, but she is also dangerously seductive as well. She knows how to use this to her advantage and get what she wants, even though the plan didn't fall into place that she had hoped for. She knew all too well just how to torture and manipulate her husband into staying with her at the end, and she is not afraid to show just how dangerous she can be and how she will do whatever it takes to reach her goals, which is why she's a prime example of the femme fatale. I'm the cunt you married. The only time you liked yourself was when you were trying to be someone this cunt might like. And before we get to our number one spot on our list, here are some honorable mentions. This is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to laugh in your face ever since I first met you. You're old and ugly and I'm sick of you. Sick, sick, sick. 
Number one on our list for the most dangerously intelligent femme fatales is none other than Catherine Trammell from Basic Instinct. Could you tell us the nature of your relationship with Mr. Boz? I had sex with him for about a year and a half. I liked having sex with him. He wasn't afraid of experimenting. I like men like that. Men who give me pleasure. He gave me a lot of pleasure. Catherine Tremel loves playing games as they're fun. In the movie Basic Instincts, a neo noir film, Sharon Stone plays the role of Catherine Tremel, a seductive, enigmatic writer. She writes novels on crime and murder, and when her famous rock star boyfriend Johnny Boz is murdered with an ice pick by a mysterious blonde woman during sex in the same fashion as she'd written in one of her novels, she becomes the prime suspect. Did you kill Mr. Boz, Miss Tremel? I'd have to be pretty stupid to write a book about killing and then kill somebody the way I described it in my book. I'd be announcing myself as the killer. I'm not stupid. She's then investigated by Nick Curran, a homicide detective with a violent past. She then begins a manipulative, intense and torrid relationship with Nick, toying with him and constantly putting him on edge as he tries to solve the crime. Catherine manipulates and seduces Nick and the other men around her, dressing in seductive clothes and engaging in seductive conversations. She is by no means shy when it comes to sex and pleasure. This can be seen in the movie's most famous scene where she uncrosses and recrosses her legs in front of the detectives, proving that she is not wearing any underwear. <laughs> Her troubled cat past comes into light as they're investigating her, showing links to the deaths of her wealthy parents, college professor, who was also killed with an ice pick, inspired by her first crime novel, as well as her previous fiance, who is a famous boxer. Though she has an alibi for the death of a boyfriend, all clues point to her as a murderer, and she constantly keeps Nick on his toes and manipulates him back with his past, bringing up his violent history and killings. Catherine Tremel ranks number one on this list as she embodies the criteria of a femme fatale to a T. She emerges as sultry seductress of the 1940s with a confident contemporary woman, far smarter and fearless than the men around her. However, what makes her unique and possibly one of the most dangerous is her motivation. Unlike most femme fatales, she is already possessing all the money and power she needs. She has no need to hook a man and leave him to drown for reward. She would rather use her advantages for lust to turn interesting lovers into even more interesting fictional characters. She gets inside their heads, examines their motivations, actions, and primal instincts in order to write about them as gently as she can. Catherine uses the truth to her advantage. She has a glass full of brutal honesty. Her four strongest qualities are intelligent, manipulative sex appeal, constant calm under pressure, and shock value honesty. She leaves law enforcement's jaw on the floor as they eat up every word she says. Her intelligence allows her to turn the tables on her accusers and slap them right in the face with the cold hard truth. Catherine has Nick in such a trance that he reverts back to his alcoholic wildful self, smoking and having rough sex as he attempts to copy her non chalant attitude towards rules. Due to her calm power and influence, her cunning well cultivated open mind, and dangerously seductive dominant personality, Catherine Tramel ranks as our number one dangerously intelligent femme fatale.